Not very good. All right. So these are our measuring matter notes. Like I said, we're going to do the measuring lab next class. Um, so let's make sure we know how to measure. All right, we're going to go through four different quantities that we can measure. Of course, there's many other things we could measure, but starting with mass. Uh, mass in the metric system is measured in what? Good, grams. Don't say pounds. Measured in grams. Um, and your scale should have a little G on it, so you should know it's grams. What is mass? It's the amount of matter in an object. And if we're going to measure the mass of a solid, we're going to use our balance. And do you remember what this word was? Remember to zero it out. I want another word, though. It starts with a C. That's a good one. Calibrate. I'm going to go calibrate. Like we get the door for her. All right, in order to calibrate it, what do you have to do? <coughs> yes, turn this little knob, but before I do that, I've got to make sure the sliders are where? All the way to the left, all the way on zero. So all the way on zero. That's really not too bad. Like I said, there's going to be a little screw on the side. You can unscrew it or screw it in, depending on what you need to do to calibrate it. But please always make sure your scale reads zero before you actually put something on it. And I also said this is really going to be the only lab where we use these kind of old-fashioned balances. Um, we'll use electronic balances after that, which are nice little scales. But you can also calibrate those, too. There's just a button for it, so that's kind of nice. But don't forget to hit the button. It will say uh, tear sometimes, or maybe it even says calibrate, or maybe it even says zero. Um, but even the electronic balances, there's a way to calibrate them out. OK, so solids. We're using our balance. We've got it calibrated. So let's say I want to, I don't know, find the mass of my post-it notes. What side do I put it on again? Left. Left. These are sort of counterweights. You want to slide them away from the thing you're measuring. What do you slide first, the big one or the small one? Big. big. All right, not enough. Go until you've gone one too far. So it flips all the way over. If that's too far, back it up. And then use a small one. All right, and then, yeah, you guys in the front, you can kind of see the big one says 20. The little one says five, five, and, five and three quarters, maybe 5.7. Just add it all up. 20 and 5, it's 25 point, in this case, 7. All right, easy. Liquids. If I want to find the mass of a liquid, and then, yeah, so I'm not, I'm not quite doing this in the right order, but if I want to find the mass of this liquid, do I just pour it on the scale? Uh, yes. yes? Do it? Yeah. No. Do it. Do it. Do it. I dare you. No. I find the mass, it's like normal. Oh, yeah, you gotta find the mass of the thing without the water in it. Exactly. I've got to find the mass of the container first. Please don't forget to subtract the container. And just because I'm asking you to measure the mass of a liquid, just because it's a liquid doesn't mean you have to use a graduated cylinder. The graduated cylinder is nice, but it's not going to help us find mass. It's going to help us find volume. So don't think just because I've given you a liquid you're supposed to find volume. I can ask you to find the mass. Okay. We got it. Did you all write down subtract here? Volume is the amount of space an object takes up. So volume. You're going to want to use your graduated cylinder for liquids. Um, but here's sort of an interesting phenomenon with liquids. Liquids don't usually lay flat. And the smaller your container, the more easy it is to tell. You can almost tell on this one. Um, but an even smaller graduated cylinder would be even easier to tell. But they have what's called a meniscus. And in the case of water, water would like rather touch the sides of the container than itself. So it's almost like crawling up the sides of the container. Uh, so where do you read it? So what is this volume? 
35. First, yeah, so that marks 35. This marks 36. But the answer would be 35. So we'd say this is 35 milliliters for this particular drawing. You might want to mark that down on your paper that that should be 35. The meniscus is the curve. Always read it right smack in the middle of the curve. So right in the middle, that's going to be 35. Now, not all liquids curve down. Some curve up. They bubble up, like mercury. Uh, mercury would rather touch itself than the container. So mercury has a meniscus that bubbles up. Um, and mercury is kind of a neat thing. Mercury is the only uh, metal that's a liquid at room temperature, which we can tell by the periodic table. Um, is mercury good for you? No, mercury is poisonous if you get that in your body. Um, back in my parents, like grandparents' generation, yeah, they would play with mercury because it's kind of neat because it would like stay in a little liquid ball. And you could like drop it on the floor and it would like roll around like a little ball. But, of course, it was dangerous. It gets in your body or you like inhale any mercury vapors, which can happen if like fluorescent lights break while they're on, that's when they'd be in a gas form. That can be dangerous because you wouldn't want to inhale that. But it can make you very sick. Um, it can even make you crazy. Have you ever read or seen uh, Alice in Wonderland? You heard of the character the Mad Hatter? Do you know why he's mad? Probably because of mercury since I'm leading into this, but you know, back in the day they would clean and shine hats with mercury make him look new. So if he was handling mercury all the time, you know, it might make him go crazy. So anyway, a little bit about mercury. Yeah. Yeah, and if you've seen a thermometer where the line's like silver, that's mercury. Okay, anyway, that is how to measure liquid volume. What about something that's a solid? Well, if it's something that's got like a normal shape, a regular shape, like say this Kleenex box, nice rectangular shape. How could I find the volume? Uh, length times width times height. And when we do the measuring lab, I'm going to have little blocks of wood where I will actually, you know, like you to measure the sides with a ruler. Do length times width times height. But not all shapes we have a formula for. Like I don't know my key. So if I wanted to find the volume of my key, how could I do that? Melt it into a cube? Okay. Or an easier way, perhaps? Exactly. Drop your key into some water. Perfect key. When you drop the key into the water, the water's going to rise. Let's say it goes to here. In which case, the key would be 39. Yeah, uh, the key alone is 4. If it went from 35 to 39, the key must have been 4. milliliters um, or centimeters cubed. Rookie mistake. Don't forget what you started with. In the measuring lab when I ask you to measure something that's clearly like small like this should be I don't know maybe four milliliters is right here. If I were to melt it down put it in there. If it's something that clearly should be four and you're telling me it's 39 you know, I know you forgot to, to note what it was originally. So don't forget to start out, to note what you start out with. All right, anyone know what this name is? This method where I drop the key in, watch the water go up. It's called the blank method. Starts with a D. The water is another, another word for pushed out of the way. Destroyed. What? Yes, I'm going to go displaced. 
This is the displacement method. All right, one last thing I didn't mention about volume. Uh, metric units. Meters cubed. So picture this by this, you know, by this. Um, which is the base unit? We'll probably deal with centimeters cubed, which matches up with not liters, but Meter. milliliters. If you're using the graduated cylinder, you're going to be measuring in milliliters. OK. One more slide where you got to write. So length, we're going to use our meter stick. You will have meter stick. You'll have a few things to measure the length of in the lab next class. I'm going to ask you to measure like the sink. I'm going to ask you to measure the length and width of a block on the wall. Um, but the smallest itty bitty marks are millimeters. The numbers that are written, like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, these are our centimeters. So imagine you have this random black object over here, which I think was a comb. I don't know. How uh, long would you say it is? Although that's a pretty big comb, so I don't know if that makes sense. But what? 41.6. 41 point. Good. And then note, you know, your little mark that's just a little bit bigger, that's your halfway. So in between 41 and 42, that would be 45, or 41. And a half, 41.5, not 45. One extra mark, that'd be 41.6. Now, what you can do, if you think it is in between, is you actually can guess. If you, th if you can clearly tell that it's a little bit more than the six, you are allowed to guess. This is actually called um, the uncertain digit. This is using correct significant figures. Um, we won't really worry about that. But just if you were ever curious if it was in between marks, how did you do that? How would you deal with that? You do get to add your, your guess, the uncertain digit. And last thing we're going to measure is temperature um, in our class. Not Fahrenheit. Do you know what room temperature is Fahrenheit? Like what do you set your thermostat to probably? Uh, 70, 71, 72. What about Celsius? Uh, 20. Yeah, room temperature is about 20, 22 really? in Celsius. Oh, I guess. How about freezing? What's uh, the freezing point of water in Celsius? Zero. 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 Fahrenheit? 32. 32. Boiling. What's boiling in Fahrenheit? One. Other one? 212. 212. How about Celsius? 100. 100. Okay. Thank you. Um, just a couple more little, you know, these are just kind of helpful hints. You know, thinking about metric instead of the English system, like, well, what, what are some metric measurements? A meter is just a little bit more than a yard. A centimeter, shh, be like the width of your fingernail. A gram, a gram is not much at all, like a paper clip or a thumbtack. Uh, a kilogram is about 2.2 pounds, so that's not much either. Um, a milliliter is also really small, so a teaspoon is about 5 milliliters. Liters, you should kind of know that from soda, a 2 liter thing of soda, half that's a liter. All right, we just talked about room temperature. All right, and then kilometer. Sometimes you hear people say, you know, they're running a 5K. You got a 5K race. So that's kilometers. Is a five kilometer race more than five miles or less than five miles? Less than five miles. It's less than a mile. So one mile is about how many kilo, kilos, kilometers? Less than two, more than one. It's, yeah, it's a little more than one half. It's like 1.6. So if you are curious, I think.